difference between weather and climate. So climate is the long-term average weather conditions, usually at a particular location or over a given time period, thinking about statistics. So how would you define weather? So I would say it's the condition of the atmosphere at a particular location at a particular time of entry. If it's raining, that's the what? The more general term is the precipitation. So if I say summers are hot here, that's a statement of climate, right? Or what if I said our biggest rain month is, let's say August. We could also say our first snow of the year in Denver, that's close to where I live, is usually just before Halloween. And by the way, climate statements a lot of times are also very specific in terms of statistics, right? You could say the average high temperature today is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. 68 degrees Fahrenheit is about 20 degrees Celsius. Do we always use Fahrenheit in meteorology or do we sometimes use Celsius? So this is how you get Kelvin from degrees Celsius. So you just take this equation and just solve for degrees Celsius. By the way, did I use the word degrees when I talked about Kelvin? That was intentional. Do you have any idea why? So it turns out that you see this, Kelvin is the absolute scale in science, which means zero Kelvin, which is what we sometimes call absolute zero, has no molecular motion, at least theoretically. No one's ever achieved absolute zero. Um, people have gotten temperatures down to about 10 to the minus nine Kelvin. So that's one of the lowest temperatures ever recorded. So it's extremely low, but not zero. When we're talking in terms of atmospheric science and meteorology, we often express things in degrees Celsius or we often work in Fahrenheit as well, especially in the United States. But any ideas about how we convert from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit? We're going to take degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 and then times five ninths, right? You take degrees Celsius, you multiply first by nine fifths, and then you add the 32 at the end. So some of this is what you remember from algebra it's like the order of operations, right? Where well, the little asterisk here means times. So precipitation, temperature, and wind speed are all ways we define weather. Can you think of another thing we use to define weather? There's something that I think we should introduce pretty early on. There's a nice equation that relates air pressure, air density, and temperature together. So if you wanted to write this more compactly, and what I mean by compactly is typically in science, we want to use symbols for like a shorthand. Okay, so this is typically how you'll see the equation as well. Yeah. Now, I'd be very surprised if your professor did not very soon talk a lot about lapse rate. Now, that's part of the reason why I went back here and gave you a definition of lapse rate. Yeah. It's the rate at which temperature decreases with height. Have you ever gone for a hike into the mountains? increasing altitude. Now think about this. As the altitude increases, what usually happens to the temperature in the atmosphere? It gets colder, so it decreases. Now there's reasons for that. The main reason is because the sun heats the earth from below. In other words, if you look up at the sun, a lot of sunshine makes its way to the ground and it heats the ground. Because the ground is heated, the ground is warm, but the higher you go up from the ground, so generally lower altitudes are warmer and higher altitudes are cooler in the weather layer, in the lower part of the atmosphere, where we live. Yeah. Now, by the way, that actually has a name. So it's called, I think, the troposphere. Does that sound familiar? Part of the reason the lapse rate is defined as it is shown, we assume that the temperature is decreasing with height in the troposphere. If we do a plot of temperature on this axis and then height on this axis, remember temperature is usually gonna be in Kelvin or degrees Celsius or something, let's just call it Kelvin. Height would be typically in meters. The temperature is generally gonna go like this. Could have some wiggles, but the temperature decreases with height, right? So that's the lapse rate. 
Notice it says the word decreases is built into the definition. That's why I went back here and I engineered in a negative sign. Do you see that? Because when you do the upper temperature minus the lower temperature, usually it's gonna give you a negative number because the upper temperature is colder than the lower temperature. Now, by the way, the change in height will pretty much always be positive because you're just, you're ascending, you're going up. So you put in a minus sign out the front because you want the lapse rate to be a positive number. Now, I wanna get back to what you were asking about before. This is an important concept. Suppose you reach the top of the troposphere. Is the temperature decreasing with height anymore? The temperature actually starts to do what? Increases with height. And what do we call that? Inversion. At this point right here, we would call this the tropopause because that's where the troposphere pause is, where the troposphere stops. This layer here would be called the troposphere, correct? Because that's where the temperature decreases with height. But then when the temperature increases with height, that's an inversion. Now think about what the word invert means. Invert means to do the opposite of what you expect. So instead of the temperature decreasing with height, it's actually increasing with height. And this would no longer be the troposphere, it'd be called the stratosphere. Does that sound familiar? The stratosphere is the layer above the troposphere. Lapse rate is super important because when you know the lapse rate, you know how stable or unstable the atmosphere is. Generally, if the lapse rate is unstable, you get clouds, precipitation, and storms. If the lapse rate is very stable, you get very clear, sunny skies. Now, it could be anywhere in between. I mean, obviously, you've seen some days which are perfectly sunny. You've seen some days where it's like lightning and thunder all day, right? <laughs> And then there's some days that are kind of like a little bit of both, right? A few clouds or storms a little bit or sunny in the morning, then storms later. Does that all make sense? Yes. Yeah, all right, great.